Alrighty. So we've got our lovely Ghost Lake match on a lovely Tundra tile set today. Uh, thanks to PF2K for making that one for us. And uh, spawning on the bottom side of the map, that's the blue player in the... I guess that's a 7 o'clock position. We've got Yu Omo Nero playing his Norse today. And spawning on the top side position here is the red Babylonian player. In about, I guess, the 130 sort of position. Um, we've got Sir Majeste playing, yeah, his Babylonian. So, both these guys going to try and contest these sheep quickly. And Sir Majeste has actually pinched one of these sheep off his opponent already. And he's going to try and use the sheep uh, to scout, I guess, if he's trying to run it that way. Or I suppose he's just trying to avoid the... The scout. Anyway, it looks as though Sir Majesty has managed to trap all these three sheep, and this is a trade his scout will win because the Norse they got another scout instead. So right now, Sir Majesty taking advantage of the fact that he has the beefier scout here, he can afford to guard here for a little bit in a sense. But in another sense, the Norse player can use his other scout to track down the sheep and can use it to continue scouting around the map. So Sir Majesty hasn't really scouted out much at all. Other than, you know, what he's put into trying to secure these sheep, which it looks as though he should be able to get the majority of, but oh, this is a bit dangerous for him, because if Nero notices this, he could pinch these three sheep, but he's actually back at home. Oh, here we go. Nero might have seen it, but he, oh, I don't think Nero actually saw that then, so Nero doesn't see these three sheep, which the Majeste could have lost very easily there, where he had his scout all the way over here. Nero scout right here, and those sheep just wanted straight on past, so... A little bit better map awareness from Nero, and it could go a long way for him in a sense, because he would have managed to get three sheep really easily there, I think, because Majesty was just preoccupied with trying to scout out the rest of his own side of the map, because like I said, with only one scout as every sieve other than Norse, if the Norse player has a scout fighting your scout, in a sense, you're, you know, you're going to win that trade, but you're actually costing yourself because it's your only scout. The Norse can still continue to scout with their other scout, and they've effectively just baited you into sacrificing yours to their little gimmicky not eight speed scout. When you've got your glorious nine speed scout and it's just doing nothing. Ten speed scout and it's just doing nothing. Anyway, so back to the players. We've got an early barracks here from Nero and he's gone on his wood as well. I'm pretty sure he took the wood after. It's Majesty also on his barracks. So the Babylonian generally does get the uh, quicker... Um, Spearman in the matchup, I believe. And Nero's range scout now, really low. And all oh, this is a bit dangerous, really, because if he can't win this fight, it's yeah. Oh, so that makes it out on full health, and he needs to be careful to get this back out of here without it getting seen, without it getting attacked by one more lynx, because it's got four health, so he can get H two. He can take the healing ointment, or as Babylonian, you don't even need to. In your ziggurat, the pharmacology tech has been changed to now actually affect scouts. It was originally supposed to, um, I believe, but it never actually did. So it's been changed to do that. So you can just get pharmacology on Babylonian on every other sieve. You've got, you've got to get a healing ointment, but yeah, on Babs, you don't actually have to anymore. I suppose on Purge, you could just get a tent and make use of that. But the beauty is... It actually does stack with other healing effects. So if you've got aid tent or if you've got pharmacology and you take healing ointment, your scout is actually really quite strong early on. And it's a 600 health unit with quite a hefty amount of health per second then. So there are times when you can actually take really, really good fights with your scout acting as a tank. Um, if you make use of that, I think Persian and Babylonian, because, well, obviously the civs are the healing. Um, because of their bowmen as well, you can really play around that, use the scout to tank for bows in the face of things like spearmen or um, your age 2 counter infantry from other sieves if they've invested in the barracks early and yeah, you're lucky enough to get on the range and take that double investment in your healing on your scout, so keep that one in mind. That's uh, a little cheese. Don't tell me I told you. I didn't tell you PF2K told me. So it looks like Sir Majesty really zoning Nero for now. And Nero still getting a, a bit of a slow age 2. Sir Majesty nearly on the stone for his age 3, but he's actually got no ox carts here or here. 
at this point in time yet so I don't know if it's because he wants to skip spending the investment or if it's just because he's forgotten about them at the moment he's actually struggling a bit to maintain his production but he's getting this stables which would be really effective for him and I don't think Nero was able to see that. Nero didn't come in far enough to actually see the stables go up there so it's a bit of information he'd probably like to know but he can probably also assume quite easily considering it's Babylonian versus Norse um, that they're going to get some form of counter infantry and they obviously don't have a counter infantry from the barracks and they can rely on the lancers but I mean if you get the spearmen if you've already got spearmen from age one you just got to keep reducing more so the lancers they can't quite get on account where they can take a cost effective fight um, and they've got to invest in the range as well so that could be coming soon but for now this high ball of spears should just be able to take a big fight against a smaller number so we've got seven or four spears out village accounts are 22 to 24 so some somehow i actually knew what nero's was before i actually read it there i went 22 to 24 <laughs> amazing um but yeah village accounts 25 to 24 uh 22 now actually so so i just say slightly ahead in the villager lead slightly better production and he's going to get this age two town center up a little bit faster than his opponent but Nero has this big clump of spears, and he should be able to get some harass on these villagers before he has to back out. Oh no, he decides to actually back out. So not really getting a lot of value out of that, trading a spear for a spear. Looks like it's going to be two for two. Oh, two for one. Yeah, so he's going to lose these spears. They have been snare locked now, so they're going to fall. And his own town center, Nero's, is... I think it's going to be safe, because the Lancers... There's only one coming out now, and the other one's just starting out. But His Majesty now does have more back in his base, so... Norse player is probably going to have to invest in throwing Axeman, because he's not going to invest in Raiders straight away to deal with this, but at the same time, he's going to need to keep getting more Spears, because as time goes on, the Babylonian gets more and more Lancers out, and the throwing Axemen are going to be not that shabby under the uh, bowman fire but he's also going to need to get the um, raiders out of his stables because they're going to be a good counter to the bowman that'll be coming next from the babylonian he's not going to commit to the slingers because there's no point against the norse this early in the game and so here comes a barracks and an armory and i'd imagine the stables will be the next choice for nero although his production has slipped a little bit so needs to really get on top of producing those workers because His Majesty doesn't even need to attack him at this point and he can grow a small lead over his opponent because he's just going to be able to maintain better villager production but in saying that His Majesty again making a mistake he's already made earlier in this tournament he's continuing to queue villagers up out of one town center but not the other so that's also going to harm his economy because he's basically still on one town center production now that Nero has picked up his town center um, production again. He's producing two villages at once, so he can close this gap over some Majesty, and it'll be Nero that doesn't have to even rely on attacking much because he'll have better economy behind it all. So the tables have turned. How the turn tables? There's a, another range here actually from the Babylonian, so he's making a big commitment to the range units. Well, he definitely wants to get a high bowman count in age two, then in age three he is going to be insulated against um bowman coming out from the norse in a sense although he could continue making raiders anyway and have the stables there just to get more raiders to deal with mounted archers from the babylonian um and some horsemen in the mix to deal with the lancers because once they get champion that charge is really going to hurt and no long and spears are no longer going to be enough to contain the lancers alone and right now the advantage of having this quick range unit versus i mean quick melee unit versus a slower one is as you can see here the spears are just lumbering on through here these villagers are taking a lot of free hits throwing axemen dealing very little damage and they're actually countered by the lancers too so that's something else to keep in mind the lancers are dealing an extra three quarters of their damage again on all this infantry and some nice walling coming out from some majesty i think he knows that if you can pull this into a later game he might be able to take a good fight later on against his opponent i didn't actually see this initially he's coming on the berries and the gold with his spearmen here 
I thought I could actually hear something being attacked. And it's meant to say 41 villagers now to 39 from Nero. And he's got... His production for work is just about maxed out. While Nero's... Is really only just picking up back again, but it's Majesty losing some more units. Trying to come in from the top side now. He split his opponent up well here, I think, because he's got this pure Lancer Wall, and they're going to be very effective against any infantry that they outnumber, just because they trade evenly, fairly evenly with the Spears. Um, yeah, when they're on an even, even count, but when the Spears outnumber them, and the Spears are cheaper than the Lancers, it's goodbye to them. So as you can see here, so Majesty sort of throwing away these three. Two lances there. Gonna get these two out. But still no pharmacology tech for him, so that's gonna hurt in a sense because the Babylonian, when they make all these repeat harass attempts, part of the big boon I was doing it on Babylonian is you can get healing behind this, so here comes the pharmacology tech. And so Majesty's gonna be able to have these lances regenerate behind this. And we're seeing some a couple of stables go out now, so this will be able to clean up all these moments. So, Majesty overcommits, and he needs to be careful not to have with this double range. If if the Norse just tunnel visions on producing raiders, and you're left on Bowman as the Babylonian, it's over. And it's yeah, the Norse will be patting himself on the back and laughing all the way to the leaderboards. So basically, the Norse player. Needs to just be careful to not produce too many raiders, because there is obviously other units in the Babylonian arsenal, so if there's more spears from the Babs, you don't want to have, yeah, too many raiders for sure. If there's a lot of lances, you're definitely going to want a fair bit of spearmen, but you don't want to have too many spearmen, well, too many infantry, but particularly spearmen, because the bowmen are going to be able to fight them really well. So, interesting little engage going on here, and it looks like Nero's going to be able to hold out for now, because he's getting the raiders... Coming in now, but oh, this is not this is not so good for Nero because the Raiders, they're not a huge investment unit. They're only 75 resources versus the Lancers at over 100, and they do counter ranged. Lancers counter infantry, but Lancers, being the higher investment unit, are going to be able to trade favorably. But Nero able to mop this push up for now. So Majesty didn't quite have enough there to take that fight, I don't think. But at the same time, it could have been fought a little bit better from Nero, and there are still some Lancers here. So this could be used to deny more expansion here from Nero. So Sir Majesty has all the map control seemingly, but he isn't just but he just isn't able to take the fights he wants to take. Nero in the meanwhile, defending well enough because usually the Norse is gonna be the more defensive player at this stage of the game. Um, and earlier. So now's the time where Nero can look at pushing out a little bit. If he's a bit careful with it though, because if he's He's got no cavalry here to support this at the moment. Oh, they're back there cleaning up the lances. So he needs to be careful. He probably could have afforded to do that in reverse because if his raiders had like straight on these bowmen, there could have been a lot of really free kills for Nero, but instead the opposite... Oh, because Nero has actually pulled the lances away, there just isn't really the buffer. He's trying to snipe down all the throwing axemen, so that's good from Sir Majesty. Nero... Trying to get the value out of this he can, but Sir Majesty cleaning it up pretty well. And Nero needs a lot more food at the moment. He's got plenty of wood, plenty of gold, but he just needs to gather a bit more food. Sir Majesty's bank is a little bit more neutral, still a little bit too food, uh, wood favoured. Probably could do with a bit more food in the bank, but yeah, it's a good couple of trades so far from both players. A couple of low villagers here from the Lynxes, so if uh, Sir Majesty comes through, he can take advantage of that. But he also probably could do with cleaning these ones up, because they are going to chip away at his units when they sit out there on the pond and run back and forth. But this might not be the best trade for Sir Majesty. This might be a really good trade here for Nero, because he's going to really thin the lance account down with the last of his spearmen. And when he does go to age 3, he won't have all these spearmen locking up population that could be locked up in horsemen, so... That could be good for him, he's got a good raid account right now. So Majesty mostly transitioning to a ranged army, with a little bit of front line, but he's getting some more lances again to replenish those ones that died there. He's taken his H2 uh, melee damage and getting his H2 melee armor upgrade now. Nero, on the otherwise, other hand, has already got both of those upgrades. So it's pretty common uh, in Norse matchups 
for both players to play around that because the Norse, they're going to have a fairly pretty much pure melee oriented composition. Even with the throwing axemen, they do deal melee infantry damage. They don't deal range damage. And the Babylonian, um, well, he's he can get range damage for the bowmen, but otherwise he's going to get a lot of melee infantry damage himself early on and uh, even throughout the mid game. It's only once he really gets mounted archers that he probably needs to worry too much about a huge amount of range damage. And arm, merely armor is probably a good idea against the Norse because it would counter all the damage to the new. But right now, good little movement there from Nero. Getting the raiders onto the bowmen, but it doesn't look like he's got enough here in this force. So Majesty just has a bit too much population going into that fight, I believe, because now he's about 40 up, having cleaned that up without too much of a loss to his army. He's still got a front line, still got a back line, and there's nothing left for... Nero's force there because he had all this infantry back at home just building stuff I think he just didn't have enough units there to take the fight already in a bit of a population disadvantage going into that village accounts 56 to 75 now so just Majesty now really opening a gap up in terms of the worker production and getting a good lead out of that he'll be able to max out behind this fight a lot easier than Nero and he already is up by a lot of population so this is good for Nero though, he's getting a lot of lot of archer kills and a little bit more damage on them for free there. But Nero needs to get these raiders back on those bowmen because if he can do that again, he can get a lot of value out of this despite not really having much of a front line here and he needs to do it now because Sir Majesty has cleared a lot of his units out here. There is some guys still in the back here running around but they're a bit too late. I think Nero forgot about them when they were building and right now the raiders are taking a fight completely on their own. There's not a huge amount of spearmen here, so the raiders are getting a lot of good kills on these bowmen, which are worth nearly as much. 60 versus 75, so if you can kill two bowmen for a raider, it's a, actually a pretty good trade. But Nero, now having to fend off some Majesty's Age 3 army, he's got mounted archers and lancers coming in. So the 17 range, oh well, the 17 mounted units coming in, half of them range, half of them uh, melee, is going to be hard for Nero to deal with now. The Raiders are going to need support from this little uh, unmounted army. And he's going to need to get these horsemen out badly. Because he needs to get past the lances with the horsemen in order to get to the the uh, mounted archers. And the, the spearmen aren't going to be able to really deal the damage to the mounted archers that he needs. So they are coming onto the lances now. But the lances, by now, they've got, they've got an armor upgrade. They've got a damage upgrade. They are going to scale a bit better than these spearmen. And the lances still going to be a bit of a pest for Nero here because Sir Majesty is trying to rally them around through the back onto the farm so this is really smart stuff from Sir Majesty Nero scrambling with his raiders to come in and clean this up but this is not a great trade again you need more raiders than lancers to actually take that fight and if you haven't got them you need to just wait until you get the horsemen out otherwise you're just going to lose all your raiders for free here are the spearmen coming out now though so they are going to be able to clean this up slightly better than the raiders will even still as, as the lances scale up, um, they are going to, yeah, just outscale the spearmen. Right now, Sir Majesty getting some more good harass in on Nero, who desperately needs to get a secure market line, in a sense. He's really exposed here. He can go down from this other side and wall off a slightly smaller segment of the map. I think that might be the way to go, even if it's not as much gold in the beginning. As long as he can keep the lances out of it, that's the main thing. And right now... This little force isn't isn't great because the mounted archers have picked off the raiders. That's the only thing that's going to be able to deal with them. The horsemen coming in now, and they can go on the lances and deal a lot of damage. Or they can go on the mounted archers, deal very little damage, and then just end up getting kited. So, this horseman, very tanky unit. They are only a nine-speed cavalry. So, you rely on your opponent actually not moving anywhere to actually be able to deal any damage of your own. But while they're focusing the mounted archers, they're not focusing down the lances and. The Lancers are also picking them apart. They're not dealing any bonus damage against these Mounted Archers. Without any Raiders in the mix of this, the Mounted Archers are really strong against the Horsemen. Without any Horsemen in the mix, then the Lancers end up dealing all the damage to the Raiders. So it's a really tough situation dealing with Babylonian mixed uh, stables units compositions. But at the same time, if, yeah, if you play it right, you can actually really floor them with a stronger army unit basically because these horsemen are tankier than these lancers by a little bit and they actually do have the counter against them a direct counter whereas the lancers only counter the infantry 
But they are going to prove to be a pest because now they've got their charge attacked. And so Majesty is probably not going to pull the two units apart. Nero is falling further and further behind on the score here. He's down to 48 villagers to 97 from Sir Majesty. He's laying waste to this these two town centers over here and taking another fight here. Nero should wrap this up pretty quickly, I think, but I think the damage has been done because GG, the market's fallen. There's no villages around the second town center. And that's the game, guys. Yeah, so Nero with a competitive score, most of it. I do think he probably banked up a bit more than Sir Majesty did up until about that point. Um, because Sir Majesty did take a little bit better fights there. The production did also favour Sir Majesty for a lot of that. But in saying that, there was a point in time when Nero was producing out of two town centres and Sir Majesty was only producing out of one. So both of them did need to do a bit more work there. But otherwise, I think it was nice game there were there's a fair bit of action there you know early on it looked like there might have been a big spear fight but there actually wasn't both players just sort of backed off went for a fairly quick age two and um yeah we saw a bit of back and forth then and then age three some majesty just pushed out and that was that all right guys well we're gonna go to game two so uh just bear with me